Hey there, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here to learn piano. Today we are learning our first piece of sheet music. If you're a beginner following along with these lessons, I do want to hear how it's going, so let me know by commenting below or by heading over to Facebook and joining Piano Roadmap Community. That's our private group. It's free. We can support each other, motivate each other, and get some feedback on our playing. For those of you joining us for the first time, you'll want to make sure you know your finger numbers, note names on the keys, basic note values, and time signatures. If any of these sound unfamiliar to you, go back to lesson two before you join us here. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's get right to it. Today we're learning the basics of how to read music. Being able to read music fluently is often a pretty big frustration for beginner to intermediate pianists. There are many different views on how important reading music is or is not, but in my opinion, being able to read well opens up so many possibilities to play whatever kind of music you want. I also believe that reading sheet music should be taught almost from the very beginning. Although, I do realize that it sometimes feels like music teachers are constantly hammering note reading into their students' heads at the expense of making music. So, my goal is to have a nice balance of music reading, theory, technique, and performance, or musicianship skills. If you're struggling with learning how to read music and getting to the point where it feels easy, know that you are not alone. Nope. There's nothing wrong with you. Uh -uh. And yes, you can do it with consistent effort. So let's talk about the grand staff, the thing that notes are written on. The grand staff is split into two sections, this top section here and this bottom section. The top section is mostly where our right hand or higher notes are written and the bottom section is mostly for our low or left hand notes. In both sections, notes can be written on either lines or spaces and the higher they're written on the staff, the higher they are on the piano. This brace right here tells us that both the top and bottom sections should be read as one unit from left to right. So it's not top line first, then go down to the bottom line. Now, to be able to read sheet music, we need a reference point or a clef to decipher what piano keys each black blob on the page represents. For higher notes on the piano, which is usually, again, played by our right hand, we use the treble clef or sometimes it's called the G clef because this clef tells us that the squiggly part here surrounds the treble G line or the G above middle C. So if I write four quarter notes on this line, I would play G, 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 G. From there, everything is relative. If I go up to the next space, I have to think forward in the musical alphabet. Well, Remember that the musical alphabet ends at G, so then what comes after it? A, because we have to start the musical alphabet over again. So this space note is A. Then the next line up is the next note in the musical alphabet, which is B. And I can just keep going. C, D, E, F, and G. Now the left hand and low notes use the bass clef or F clef because the F clef points to the bass F line in two places. Bass F is the F below middle C. Now, there's one important note that is very easy to recognize that we haven't talked about yet and that is middle C. Middle C has its own special mini line, which is called a ledger line, and is often written in both clefs, so you need to be able to recognize it in both the treble and the bass clef. Now these look like a lot of notes to memorize, but don't worry, we only need to learn three this week. So I just want you to focus on memorizing these three special landmark notes, treble G, middle C in both clefs, and bass F. Now, when I say memorize, I really do want you to memorize them. 
memorize where they are on the staff and the piano. I want you to be able to recognize it instantly just like you instantly recognize that this is a letter A and that it makes an A ah sound. Ah. We can see that middle C is easy to remember because it has the ledger line going through it. But how can we easily remember where treble G and bass F are? Well, the staff lines and spaces are numbered from the bottom up. So treble G is written on line two and bass F is written on line four. To be clear, line four in the bass clef is not the same note name as line four in the treble clef. Then from these landmark notes, you can figure out any other note name quite easily just by knowing that going up on the piano step by step equals going higher on the page from a line to a space note or a space note to a line note. So if I have this note written here and don't know the name of it, hmm. I can find my closest landmark note then move up step by step forward in the alphabet until I reach the unknown note. Let's look at a new piece that you'll practice this week. It's eight simple measures, which doesn't necessarily mean it's easy to play. And as you can see, it's meant to be serene and calm. Now, if you are a true beginner, many of these symbols might be unfamiliar to you. So let's go through everything in the sheet music that is not a note. As a review, we have the treble clef and bass clef. And here is the time signature, which we can see is four, four time, meaning four beats in every measure. Now this MF is a dynamic mark. Dynamic marks tell us how loud or soft to play. MF means to play medium loud, not too loud, not too soft. Other dynamic marks include P, M, P, and F. As with many other musical terms that we'll learn, these markings stand for Italian words. The P stands for piano, which means soft in Italian. The M stands for mezzo, which translates as half. So MP literally means half soft, or a better way to think of it, medium soft. And F stands for forte, which means strong, so think loud. Going in order from softest to loudest, we have piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, and forte. Whenever you read sheet music, keep your eyes peeled for dynamic marks. Okay, towards the end of the music, we see a final bar line, but with two dots. So this is called a repeat sign. And when we see it, we go back to the beginning and play it through again. Then when we get to the repeat sign for the second time, since we've already done the repeat, move on to the last measure to end the piece. Now it's time to figure out our notes. Let's go through and circle all our landmark notes, starting in the treble clef. Remember, we have treble G and middle C. And let's check for our bass clef landmark notes, which are bass F and middle C. start practicing a piece, we always want to know our hand position or where our hands and fingers are supposed to begin on the piano. So let's look at the left hand. It starts on a landmark note, middle C, and we see this one written below. So this means to use left hand because it's in the bass clef, finger number one on middle C. Then put the rest of your fingers one to a key in order. Then the right hand begins on a landmark note as well, treble G. And here's your finger number. So put finger one on treble G. And the rest of your fingers go in order one to a key. 
So this is your hand position. Now, it's usually a good idea to first practice hands separately, so let's practice our left hand by itself. We know our first note is middle C, held for four beats, then we have another middle C in the second measure. The next note is unfamiliar to us because it's not a landmark note, so let's figure that out. We can see that middle C is higher on the staff than this unknown note, so we know that we're going to be thinking backwards in the musical alphabet. Going from middle C, let's step down to our next note. C, B, and A. So these notes are A below middle C. Then let's step down again to figure out our next set, going from A down to G, then F. Next, we step up to G, and the piece ends on middle C. Okay, so let's try the left hand out. We'll set our steady pulse, then play and count. Ready? Good. As always, feel free to pause the video and practice that on your own before moving on. Now let's practice your right hand. We've already mentioned that our first note is our landmark note, treble G, and it's a quarter note, so one beat. Let's figure out the next note after that. So we'll step up, A, B, and then C. Now here's the really nice thing about this right hand part. If you scan to the right, do you notice how it's the same two notes over and over? And it keeps going like this all the way until the second to last measure right here. While the treble G remains, the second note changes to a B. So you might want to circle that in your score so you're ready for the change. So all right, let's practice this together. We'll think of our steady pulse and then begin. Keep practicing hands separately until it feels like you can do it easily without much intense thought. Once you get to that point, then try putting both hands together very slowly. If you're a 100% complete beginner, this will probably be quite challenging for you, but I know you can do it with smart and consistent practice. It might take you a week or two to get this hands together smoothly, but that's okay. You know, concert pianists might practice a piece on and off for his or her whole life. So two weeks is really nothing. And I want you to gradually work your way up to this tempo. The last thing we need to do today is your warm-up for the week. Now, this warm-up is a very standard warm-up. You'll be in C position with both hands and you're just going to go up and down this five finger position note by note, making sure that your hands are playing together at the exact same time, nice and cleanly.
But here's the tricky part. I want you to practice this with the metronome. Now, the metronome is just a tool. It's not some magical thing that will fix all of your rhythm problems or make you a great pianist. But I think it's important to know how best to use it. So some of you might have a physical metronome like this or an app on your phone like this. The function of all metronomes is simply to click a steady pulse. Its measurement is BPMs or beats per minute. So if you set your metronome to 60, that means there will be 60 clicks every minute. In music, metronome markings use note values to set the tempo. For example, if I write quarter note equals 60, that means I'll set my metronome to 60 and every click is one quarter note. So let's do that. Set your metronome to 60 and let's play this warm up. We'll count it in four. Good. Let's try a little faster at 80 beats per minute. And why don't we do one more at 100? Practicing with a metronome can help keep your pulse nice and steady, and it can also help you gradually increase the tempo for things like this warm-up. This week, see how quickly you can play this warm-up with the metronome, making sure you're not losing control, and then let me know in the comments what your fastest tempo was. In the sheet music I provide, I listed a good goal tempo to reach, so make sure to check that out. And then if you want an extra challenge, go ahead and play this warm up in G position. And that's going to do it for us today. In the download below, you'll find a rhythm review, the sheet music for Landmark Landscape, and a musical terms dictionary. This dictionary is going to include everything you should know up to our current level. And I'm going to keep adding to this every week as we continue to learn more musical terms. So keep the link handy and revisit it often to make sure you're keeping up. Next week, we'll find ways to make our pieces sound more musical and get an introduction to intervals. So keep practicing consistently and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.